In today's video, I'm going to be talking you through the results of the Creator Tools Awards hosted by Contra. Contra is a commission-free freelance platform. So if you're a freelancer or someone looking to earn money online without high commission rates, Contra is a really great place to start. Contra is also run by an amazing team of people. So absolutely go and check it out. That aside, Contra have just run the Creator Tools Awards, which given creators like me and you the ability to vote for the tools that we love the most and that we use every single day. So without further ado, let's delve into each category and see what tools are top of the market right now and uh, helping creators every single day to build better products. So for each category, there are three types of winners. There's top tool, there's fan favorite and up and coming. So they're the three different categories we're gonna explore within each category. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it with the first category, design. So design is all about fixing and solving problems, creating something visual, and guiding a development process or perhaps heading straight onto a social media network. Design's a whole range of things. Without further ado, we're gonna start with a fan favorite for design, which is without any surprise, Figma. Figma is loved by designers. It's a brilliant tool for collaborating with other people. It's got a hugely extensive community of existing files and templates of plugins and for working with developers or for working with other members of your team. Figma is absolutely fantastic. Next is the top tool in the design category, which again, without any surprise, goes to Adobe's Creative Cloud Suite. Adobe Creative Cloud is an extensive library of tools from Photoshop and Illustrator through to 3D and video editing software. They've been a market leader for a very long time, so this is really unsurprising to see Adobe do so well. They've been a fan favorite, ironically, for a very long time and for very good reason. Their tools are incredibly powerful arguably a bit more expensive and with a harder barrier of entry than something like Figma, but nonetheless, fantastic tools and really versatile and could be used across a whole different range of media. And lastly, InDesign is the up and coming category which went to Canva. Now Canva is a tool that I would personally argue is more tailored to non-designers who need quick results that are attractive and work well, but are perhaps a bit more template based and quicker to put together than a fully custom solution, say like with Figma or Illustrator. So Canva is a great tool. It really empowers business owners to be in control of their own social media posts or newsletter designs, whatever it be. Canva makes it really easy for non-designers and designers alike to put together some really great content. Next, we move to engineering or software engineering. This is where innovation meets implementation, where we take a design effectively and turn it into a fully functional engineered application. So the three categories again, in fan favorite, we've got Next.js. So developers love Next.js for its flexibility and performance. It currently seems to be the go-to framework for most web applications. The top tool in engineering is Tailwind. Tailwind is a CSS library that brings styling to your HTML documents and makes it so easy for you to build web applications without having to leave the HTML. So you can just keep coding and the stylings will manage for you. It's really lightweight. As an alternative to something like Bootstrap, Tailwind is a brilliant thing to consider if you want a really fast and visually attractive web application. And finally, the up and coming star in the engineering category is Remix. Now I've never used or heard of Remix, but it is gaining traction for its modern approach to web development and provides users with a seamless developer experience. So definitely one to keep an eye on. Now the fan favorite for community management is a tool called Luma. Luma is loved for its ability to create and manage virtual events. And Luma also does a really great job of connecting communities worldwide. The top community management tool voted for by creators is Circle. If you are trying to set up a community online, then absolutely Circle is one of the best bets out there. The great thing about Circle is the barrier for entry for your users. So the end user is actually quite simple. I think where people are so used to social media and they might want you to set up a Facebook page so it's nice and familiar to them, then if you need to create something custom and step away from their comfort zone, then Circle's a great step because it makes it really easy for your users to hop on board. And finally, up and coming tool for community management is Threado. Threado has recently made waves in the community management area through its meaningful interactions that it builds between people with its powerful community engagement platform that it brings you that you can then offer your end users. So the next category is probably the most important to me and that is no code. So the no-code category describes software that allows you to build web applications, mobile applications, even just websites without writing a line of code. So this is where software has become so advanced that now users can achieve incredible things with what would previously have required line after line of code. Now it's drag and drop with easy interfaces, 
we can build extensive applications without needing to write a line of code. And that's exactly what this category involves. So the fan favorite for no code, and I completely agree, this is one of my favorite pieces of software of all time, Framer. Framer lets you build websites without, it's, I don't want to say without effort, it takes effort, but it is so unbelievably effortless to put together fully responsive, mobile ready, functional sites that are interactive, animated, and don't take up a ton of data. That's the most important thing. Their SEO, their search engine optimization scores are phenomenal straight out of the box. I have never used a no code builder or frankly a coded solution that ships out of the box with such great search engine optimization scores. Then the very well-deserved top spot for best tool goes to Webflow. Webflow has been around for a few years now and over its time it has gained so many new features. It's hard to summarize it in less than 10 minutes in all honesty but we have audiences and authentication. There's logic, which means you can run API calls and take a form submission and put it into a, a CMS so that you can then run a blog based on people's comments. And the extensive interactive nature of the websites you can build and the functionality of these websites with Webflow completely justify its position as the top tool. Anyone who has any prior experience with code will just fly with Webflow. It is best boiled down to a visual coding tool. But if you have no coding experience, it's still a great tool to pick up. The framer might be the best start for you. But if you need functionality like forms and you need that kind of API or a really solid backend, Webflow still might be the best option for you. Finally, the up and coming tool in no code is Flutterflow. So Flutterflow allows you to build mobile applications or web applications that are completely publishable from within the app to the app store, or to an online subdomain without writing a line of code. So this is the ability to create logical, functional applications that can run on your mobile phone or your user's phones without any code needed. A really great piece of tool and all built off the back of Google's software. The next category is marketing and CRM. So basically where we manage our audience, where we manage our customers. This can be anything from communicating with them via newsletters or SMS. It's just essentially about keeping in touch and relaying with your um, network of users. So the fan favorite in marketing and CRM is a tool called Flowdesk. Now with its beautiful email templates and user-friendly interface, Flowdesk makes email marketing a ton easier. The top tool in customer management and uh, marketing is HubSpot. HubSpot is hugely powerful. It's an extensive library of tools that you can use to market or communicate with your uh, users from everything from emails through to SEO. HubSpot's a really great thing to use if you're looking to grow your brand online. Finally, the up and coming tool in marketing and CRM is ConvertKit. Now for me, I've got to be honest, ConvertKit's my fan favorite for this category. I absolutely love working with ConvertKit and it's so great to see ConvertKit featured in this list. ConvertKit is, I think it's awesome. You can manage sign up forms so you can capture leads. You can manage automation so that you can email the right thing to the right people. You can personalize your emails to make sure that what your users receive feels authentic and truly sent to them, not just a send to all. It's a really great tool. So despite the fact that it's in the up and coming and not in fan favorite or top, I would absolutely recommend that you give ConvertKit a go, especially if you're new to email marketing. It's so simple. The user interface is really easy to use. So give ConvertKit a go as well. Fantastic bit of software. The next category is writing. So content writing, blog posting, getting social media captions. This can be scripting for podcasts or YouTube videos like this one. Uh, writing is really important. And uh, with these tools, you can write quicker. You can be more efficient in your process and you can improve the quality of what you've written itself. So the fan favorite for writing is copy.ai. So copy AI. This is an AI powered tool that helps you generate high quality copy in seconds, making it a favorite among writers. AI and writing, they seem to go together really well. And so long as you add something personal in there and edit what you get afterwards, just to make sure it can give you prompts, it can give you outlines, it can give you the finished piece of text that you can then modify yourself, which I really would recommend doing because AI content sometimes is really heavily recognizable and it's sometimes better for you to put your own stamp and brand on things. But I really think AI tools have a great place in forming the starting point so if you want to get ahead, if you want to get your copy in place before then tweaking and customizing afterwards, then give Copy AI a go. The top tool, again, no surprises here, is Grammarly. Grammarly is a great tool. You can write in Grammarly or you can copy and paste your text into Grammarly to edit afterwards. But effectively, it's going to go through your grammar 
your spelling, your efficiency, try and make sure that you're not waffling on like I often do in these videos. Grammarly is a really great tool for editing your text to be the best it possibly can be. There's a fantastic thing at the bottom if you click uh, where it says word count, open it up, there's readability score. To be able to write and see how readable what you're writing is as you go, that's fantastic. To be able to know that I'm going to write a blog post that people should find nice and easy to digest, that's really valuable information. And finally, the up and coming star for content writing is Content Harmony. So I've not personally heard or used Content Harmony, but it helps you create SEO friendly content. And from what I've heard, it does a really good job of blending the kind of more serious and more strict strategy side of SEO with the more creative, fun and exploratory side of creative writing. So it can combine a really solid strategy with creative writing and hopefully come out the other end with SEO friendly well-written content that you can promote. The next category is social media and you don't need me to tell you how important social media is because the chances are you probably know. If you're trying to grow an online brand without social media, you're missing a massive market and a massive source of traffic. Getting social media is really crucial to creators, freelancers and designers alike. The fan favorite in social media is Canva. So we mentioned Canva previously as a great design tool. Canva is also a really great social media tool. So you can create animated or static social media posts and stories across a range of formats. And again, with a template driven design system, it's so easy to get up and running really quickly. And again, if you're not a designer, you can easily use Canva to create something really attractive. The top tool in social media is CapCut. Now this is a great tool for editing video. Uh, I believe that there's a free plan that lets you work in the browser. If you want to edit video, um, produce engaging social media content quickly and efficiently. CapCut is apparently a really great tool to use. I've not used it myself just because that's not the area of work I'm in. Um, but I'm actually considering branching into this next to see what I can do um, to sort of diversify my clients' uh, social media pages with hopefully some more visually engaging and moving content. But if you're looking to edit your social media videos, then CapCut is a brilliant tool to use from what I've seen. Next up, the up and coming tool for social media is Adobe Express. Completely agree. This tool is fantastic. So I've used this a few times when I'm on the go and I need to get something to clients and I haven't got my laptop or I can't sit down and put something together in Figma or whatever it is I'm using at the time. Adobe Express will do this for you on the fly really easily and the, the results are actually really genuinely attractive. So I've um, sent work off to clients before and even to be able to do that, to be able to earn a living on the go is pretty crazy. Adobe Express is the perfect tool if you're really busy and there is going to come times where you need to provide work to your clients without access to a laptop or Figma. Adobe Express is a great option for you. Now the next category is video recording and podcasting. So very relevant for what I'm doing right now in making this video. I also podcast. The fan favorite in video and podcasting is Pika. Pika is loved for its simplicity and power in creating video content efficiently. So this is another one that drives a lot of its creativity from AI. So it's generative AI yet again. And this time around, we're taking text-based prompts and turning them into images or video content that you can use on social media or however you need them to grow your brand. The top tool in video and podcasting and the very reason I changed software for the sake of making this video just to give it a try is a tool called Descript. I hadn't heard of it myself until I saw the Creator Tools Awards. And this is the beauty of the Creator Tools Award. If you're not sure what to do, if you're not sure where to start and you want to try video editing or you want to try animation, check out the results beyond the ones I'm giving you here. I'll put the link in the description below. Go and check out the Creator Tools Awards because they give you an insight into what tools are really great to get stuck in with. That's exactly why I've chosen to use Descript for this video. I was so impressed with what I saw on the Creator Tools Awards and I switched instantly. And yeah, you let me know what you think of the quality, but I'm using this right now to record this video. A fantastic podcasting and video creating tool with AI built into it to help you correct your speech or to help you throughout the edit and it turns the entire process into something that's more aligned with editing a text document. So you are vid editing your video and your podcast, but instead of editing the timeline, which you can still do, but instead of editing a timeline, you can edit the text itself, which just makes the whole thing so much easier. You treat your video as a script and you could change the words and you could change the layout and it still works perfectly. It's a brilliant tool. Absolutely recommend giving it a go. 
Finally, the up and coming tool for video and podcasting is Butter. Butter allows you to create better video faster. It's an all-in-one video editor for modern brands. The next category is blockchain and Web3. And while I've worked with several clients on Web3 and blockchain-based projects, it's not something that I personally would say I've got lots of expertise in. So these applications and tools aren't really ones that I've used very regularly, if at all. Without further ado, the fan favorite in blockchain and Web3 is Filecoin. Filecoin is a decentralized storage network and apparently a game changer, offering secure and efficient data storage solutions. The top tool in blockchain and Web3 is ChainGPT which leverages AI to provide actionable insights and solutions in the blockchain space. And finally, the up and coming tool in blockchain and Web3 is Hardhat. Hardhat's gaining popularity thanks to its flexible development environment for Ethereum based applications. So last but certainly not least is the category of animation. Now, I don't think there's much more important than interactivity or uh, movement in design. I think when we are talking about social media, you need something to move in a way that's engaging, that's going to keep your users attracted to that page and ultimately stop them going elsewhere, stop them on your content and, and make them interested. So animation is hugely important. So again, without further ado, first is the fan favorite. And for animation, the fan favorite is Spline. I have lots of experience with Spline and it, for starters, is completely free to use. It runs in the browser and the design capabilities for this 3D tool is phenomenal. So previously, you'd need to have a lot of experience with tools like Blender or Cinema 4D or some kind of high-end 3D creative suite effectively to create what you can create in Spline in a matter of minutes. Spline has made 3D really accessible to designers and has made the whole process a ton less complicated. You can create interactive 3D animations bring them straight into your websites. You can create games. To be honest, the results with Spline are fairly limitless. Next, the top tool in animation is Jitter. I've used Jitter myself. So Jitter is an animation tool that runs in the browser. It's really extensive. And my favorite thing with Jitter is that you can take designs straight from Figma into Jitter and apply some animations. So if you want to design social media posts, or if you want to design illustrations that want, you want some animation in, design them in Figma with all the separate layers, take them into Jitter, and then you can animate each layer independently and alongside one another at the same time. So rather than needing to animate one thing, then another like you have with prototypes, you can actually run animations uh, in parallel, which is really great. Finally, the up and coming star in animation is Rive. Rive is gaining popularity for its real time interactive animations, perfect for dynamic and engaging content, and particularly with websites. So there's lots of people using Rive to achieve interactive 3D engaging animations. So as you can see, there's been so many different tools looked at and I've only covered the top three in each category than the top three. For example, in the social media category, a tool I use a lot, Buffer, didn't make it into the top three, but is in the runners up. And I would recommend you go and check out Buffer. Go and check out the Creator Tools Awards because there is an extensive list of really powerful tools that creators and designers are absolutely loving. So go and check them out. Give them a try for yourself and perhaps drop a comment below if you've tried one, if you have any different opinions to something I've said, for example, or what I've said about Canva and Figma. Perhaps you think Canva's the better tool for designers. Whatever you feel, if there's anything you think was missed on the list or if there's something that you've tried from the Contra Awards, let me know. I'm interested in what tools you're using. Perhaps there's something that's not been covered that you think is actually worthy of fan favorite or, or that top spot. Let me know. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like. Feel free to leave a comment and please do subscribe. It really helps me grow my channel. And as creators and uh, freelancers, you know how important that is. Thanks again for joining me and congratulations to all of the winners. Please do go and check out the Contra Creator Tools Awards. And until next time, thank you very much.